What Sam, what does today mean for the players when you look back at the season? Uh, oh, look, the last couple of days have been really good just to reflect and you know, just enjoy each other's company again. We've had, we had a really good day up at Burden Hand yesterday as, um, as a whole footy department, partners. I mean, there's some guys that haven't even met um, coaches' partners. Oh, some guys haven't met Belinda. Um, so it was just a really nice moment to be able to all spend that time together and reflect on the year. Because it's been, it's, everyone's been involved and um, look, it's, been, it's been tough on partners and, um, and family members too. So that was a really nice day yesterday just to all come together and, um, and celebrate what's been a, a tough year, but um, we come out, come out of it well. And today, is it, today just lads getting together to say well done? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's important um, we spend as much time together this coming weeks, the, just to keep building connection and just have that time together. And that's something we've put a real value on this year, and, and something we've seen huge gains in. So um, yeah, we'll all get together just at a private venue and just um, yeah, just spend a top, bit of time with one another. Is the reality of the fact you'll be sitting in that room and looking at some guys who won't be teammates next year is that started to sink in? I mean, I know you go through it every year, but. Yeah, does that sink in this time of year? Yeah, it's a reality every year, and it, it always the anxiety for that starts about a month ago, and it's I mean you always feel it with staff, coaches, players, and it's um, it's always the worst time of year in footy clubs because you build these relationships, and unfortunately it's just our industry, and um, people do get let go, and you do get turnovers. So um, it, that's why it's more important to make sure you more important than ever that you celebrate this time together. Um, and we have done the last couple of days and I think there'll be a few sore heads this morning but boys will be keen to get together and just make sure again we, we enjoy each other's company. Well, you're, pretty, you're, oh, sorry, no, really. you're a pretty optimistic kind of a guy. I mean, does the last month put a real different twist on how the season finishes up in your eyes and what you guys were able to get out of it or is there no getting over the disappointment that you did lose 13 in a row? No, the, the last, I'd say a couple of months was um, we take a lot out of that. You're absolutely right. There, there is an element of... Well, I mean, we finished bottom of the ladder. Like, we, first time in the club's history. That hurts. That stings. And that'll sting the playing group. But I also think that should light a little fire to, to make sure this playing group is driven to to make sure it never happens again for the footy club. And um, Yeah, that was the way we started. Obviously, Norton 13. But the last couple of months, um, it was really solid footy. And it could would have been... I mean, Previous years, you might have seen teams just fall off a cliff, but we stuck at it and ground out three really solid wins um, and played a couple of really good sides in, I think, probably the two best sides in the comp, Geelong and Richmond, and, and held our own for little patches in those games. So we can take a lot of... I think our young group can take a lot of confidence out of those games as well. And certainly, that's the standard for next year. That's... For me, and I think... Everyone, we expect that's where we come back. That's the level we come back at and we build from there. Rory, what's your um, biggest takeaway? Obviously, Skipper, you know, tough year, but you finished really strong with the set. What do you take away from 2020? It was a difficult year all round, I know. Yeah, I mean, some of your, I mean, your toughest, this has definitely been our toughest year as a footy club. And I think some of our best learnings we'll get as a footy club will come out of this year. And we've learnt a lot. And a lot of that we're able to act on, I suppose, this last couple of months. So there's learnings. I mean, for me, we're able to, one of the best things, we're able to change it mid-season. So I'm excited for when we get a whole pre-season, another whole pre-season all together and get to train the same staff. I'm excited for what can happen. There, there is a realistic chance that you may not be all together until the new year, though, isn't there? There's a lot of talk about maybe pre-season starting January. That's a good three months now where you're going to be apart. What's your plan personally to fill that, that void? And... Have you given any thought to what the group might be able to do in small groups together, or how do you, you yeah. just want to drop it now and see you next year? No, nah, not at all. I mean, and, and I suppose we're in a fortunate enough position, being in SA and living here at the moment, that um, our protocols, like from a state point of view, are, are quite good. So we will be able to train together and stuff. Um, a lot of guys probably won't be able to return to Melbourne for a little bit because we know we'll have to either quarantine coming back in here, and um, so we'll have a lot of a lot of the group will stick together, and I think. That'll be great. It'll be a great opportunity for us to train together and, and keep building on what we've already done so far. So, um, again, I talked about the connection piece, but there'll be an element of we'll all be able to train together um, at different periods of this break because just because of the way, I suppose, I mean, Victoria is at the moment too. And I know personally I'm, it's going to be tough to go home. I'd love to go see some family at home, but, I mean, we'll encourage guys to go explore South Australia because it's a pretty beautiful place too.
Yeah, and be prepared to go a bit younger next year as well. Sloane, like you probably lose a bit of experience, you're going to be heavily active at the pointy end of the draft. Is there a chance that it, it might take a little bit of time to gel with some young guys next year? Are you prepared for that as, again to go through? So yeah, it's, it's important to do. I think we've seen this year, it's important to make sure you debut guys. Um, I mean, Harry Schoenberg, you give him a chance and you give him a few games and you look what he's, he's been able to do the last month of footy. Lockie Scholl's the same thing. Um, so absolutely, that's one of the learnings. We, we, we know we'll get some top-end talent um, and some of those kids will be ready to play and some might need a bit, bit of time still. So um, it'll be exciting for us. But, and as we've learned the whole year, you definitely need a balance. You need a balance of senior heads around. Um, yeah, you need a really, really good balance of both. This time of year, obviously there's going to be significant change to the coaching department as well. Do you know who will be there next year out of you know, God's Hardy or all those sorts of guys? No, I'm not sure. And that's, again, the unfortunate part of the industry. There's always, there's always change, there's always turnover. And, um, I, I think those chats probably happen later in the week if, if they do. And, um, again, I'm just proud of the way everyone's stuck at it this year, and especially that coaching group. It would have been, I was, I was spoken about this a lot, but the environment never changed. It was really really happy place to come into all year and um, if had it been the other way we wouldn't have got those results and obviously tough for brad is it one of those things do you feel sorry for him or you know when it, with the situation it is or it's just part of what it is what do i feel sorry for brad for oh just you know with the club you know going through a bit of a tran transformation and whether or not you know he's in those plans he said that you know it might be that in the club's best interest to go for an earlier pick or well it's uh, that nothing's been i think said or done yet so um we love brad Obviously, we'd want to do everything to keep him. Um, and again, that'll just unfold. It, it seemed like the midfield turn when he came back from injury, and you obviously got yourself in good nick as well. How banged up were you during the year? You obviously had a lot of little compounding injuries. Were you able to get on top of that late in the season? Yeah, just a few little niggling injuries, are just one after the other. I mean, it was a broken thumb that kept me out for, was it four or five? We had a lot of games one after the other there, so it was just frustrating really. You want to be out there, especially when we're losing, you want to be out there to help and that was the, yeah, the bit I enjoyed the most. Coming back in, we had Brad, Laird, Matty Crouch in there, Keezy and Chase. Um, so we had a good mixture of sort of some senior guys and some senior bodies around some younger kids too and I thought the mix was good. And regardless of where the crowd runs there next year, you're confident that midfield is taking a step this year to show that you'll be better next year? Oh look, we've got guys, I mean, Paul Wayne Miller, I had a bit of an injury prone year too, and I think he's one guy we can look to bring through there. Um, we'll, we'll bring him through regardless. Uh, Brody Smith might come in through, you saw patches of him in there too, and I like what Brody brings in there. Obviously, Port have done very well. Do you watch on now with close interest and hope they do well? Or? I am. Um, it's, it's sort of funny. I, I enjoy watching teams from South Australia. I don't know, it's just there's something about it sort of adopted South Australia as a second home it's, and it's, it's a great spot to live so I mean there's always an element of teams in SA do better, the whole town thrives and is up and about so from that point of view yeah and then you'll, I'll certainly be watching some footy, I mean there's some really good teams playing, Brisbane, Port Geelong, Richmond um, all in outstanding form Is it uh, going to be tough for guys to come back in in good nick so they don't waste the games that you made at the end of the season. I know Reece, you touched on how hard it is to sort of train and all that sort of stuff. Like how much emphasis on really doing the right thing and, and taking full advantage of what you've been able to do the last two months? Well, as I, yeah, as I said earlier, the the sting and hurt from finishing bottom is certainly real. And that's, it has to hurt blokes. And that's that's going to be the driving force, I think. It's like, right, first time ever in the club's history, yep, we finished bottom. All right, so how do we not end up there again? We learnt this year, you've got, to, you've got to put the work in, absolutely. And that's going to be this break coming up. Um, you need to put the work in. The relationship staff will keep working on. Um, and then, yeah, then it's down to footy. When, when we can train footy, hopefully there's a few less restrictions around what we can train because that certainly plays a part in it too. We weren't able to train to this, I suppose, the same drills as what you'd, you'd normally do to be able to instill a game plan. Um, and that's what's been tough on Nixie and the coaches this year is there's so many restrictions of what we couldn't do. Um, so I'm looking forward to hopefully a few changes next year, I suppose. So it's a fair thing to include the, the pandemic on the books when you have a look at the season. It's just been so topsy-turvy. You don't just sort of like put that in the back of your mind and go, well, we're in the midst of the pandemic as well. When you consider how you went through the season and in every other club too. So I'm 
my brain's operating that's about right, right. half <laughs> at the moment. Does that, do you um, consider the pandemic uh, and how it's affected your season, just like every other club, or do you sort of put that aside when you consider how you've gone through the season? Yeah, it's, um, as I said, it's, there's certainly been restrictions around what we can and can't do at training. It's, it's probably just hurt us trying to bring in a new game style with obviously a new, new senior coach. But we're able to adapt. We found new ways to, to learn and um, instill that game plan. I was watching, and for us, it was really just watching a lot of vision, just repeat watching vision, watching patches of game, periods of game as a group. Um, yeah, so we put the work in, but we just had to find different ways. Who's your pick for BNF, Sonny? Had a few really solid performers this year. I mean, I love Riley O'Brien's year again. He, um, he's been outstanding, the big fella in the ruck, and he's only played, people forget, he's only played 30 odd, 40 games. Um, so he's going to be a really solid ruckman for us for plenty of years to come. Um, Rory Laird, I love midfield Laird, I've been calling him. Um, really enjoy him having him around the footy. He, his pressure's been elite, so yeah. Riley, Lairdy, probably my two. What about today? Who's best on? Um, I mean, the, the big Texans never, never shy to have a good day. Uh, I don't know. There's a there's we've had a good couple of days already, just as a whole group, as a whole like a whole footy club. Um, again, I'm just looking forward to enjoying enjoying some time together. Was it nice to walk out of your house today, and not have to think about what you are and aren't able to do? It's nice to shake your hand again and, and give you a hug, Theo. It was we, Belen and I went down for. Um, some brekkie earlier and it was great just to sit down and put Sonny in a high chair and I know simple things but yeah that was a nice moment. I'll be playing on the park with Sonny next week too and that's going to be great as well.